Before I begin this video, I just want to say there are no good or bad classes. There are only easy or difficult classes, so some classes are harder to do the same things that an easy mode class is. Sort of like the Kung Fu Master in Blade and Soul requires more skill in order to get the job done compared to other easy mode classes in Blade and Soul. Similar analogy, a 600 gear score Pikachu will wreck all of our faces. Now let's continue with the description. So let's talk about the rating system in this video. The rating system is going to be based off of PvE difficulty, PvP difficulty, the tech, skill, requir um, skill requirement which basically is my recommendation, uh, and the combat ability com category which is like the character's natural parameters which is like their damage, mobility, support, and survivability. That is my analysis for this class video and this is pretty much an opinion video that people requested so I hope you guys enjoy it. Warrior is a typical sword and shield slash great sword class. It is a very good well rounded character that gives you the damage, the mobility, vibability. Only thing that I would say is the warrior's downsize is that it's not much in the support category. But let's get more back to the general class gameplay guys. So general gameplay for warrior, I would say the PvE gameplay for warrior is a little on the slow side. He is not the fastest killer in PvE, but he does get the job done fairly well enough. PvP wise, the warrior is a very easy class to get done. I gave it a score of a 3 strictly because of this. You need a good understanding of the basics and you can literally be carried all the way through and through with the warrior class using its super armors and a good understanding of the basics and blocking. You can be a top tier warrior without even being a high level, I'm a high tech type of player. But the warrior, what's interesting about the warrior is that it does have tech and if you do want to be a technical warrior with the animation cancels and stuff like that the class gives you room to grow still but it is people will call warrior a dummy class but it's not a dummy class if you want to be a high tech warrior but it is a dummy class meaning that you can get by with just the basics and knowing how to time your basics okay then let's go back down to combat ability guys so warrior being one of the brawler slash tank categories I will give it a damage of 3.5 his damage is really good his damage is based highly on buffs as well as debuffing his opponents he has a lot of good um, combo abilities well protected with super armor so he is hard to interrupt his mobility is decent pre awakening has faster mobility and uh, his awakening has a, a decent consistent uh, great sword thrust kind of charge skill so it's, it's fairly reliable his mobility is definitely worth the score over three so his support isn't that great his CC is okay nothing to raise his score past 2.5 he doesn't buff his teammates that often if he has any that I know of please let me know in the comments um, but I would not label him a, a heavy support but his survivability is really great though his survivability is really great centered around the super armor guard his, his super armor is really powerful guard that's hard to break as well as his, the fact that he can suck the life out of his opponents with a very easy to land skill to give him his HP back, giving him a lot of sustainability in the battlefield. Okay guys, time for our favorite giant furball, the Berserker. So the Berserker is a really good class, it has pretty much everything you can think of possible for this class. It doesn't have any major weaknesses, but then again it doesn't have anything that's a great strength to it outside of its heals and grabs. So the PvE difficulty is a 6 for me. I don't think Berserkers are the fastest at clearing mobs. So I'll give it a 5 or a 6 actually. It can be fast remotely relevant to their AoE speed. So a, a solid 6 for PvE. It won't be too difficult leveling up a Berserker. Um, PvP difficulty will be 5.5. It'll be centered around grabs and 1v1s and AoEs in group combat. The tech is going to be based around its mobility. Anyone can do a grab combo with a Berserker, but not everyone can do the mobility and learn how to do the dance because it requires some tech with animation cancels, along with mixing it with your lava piercing and your um, pre awakening and awakening swaps. So the skill requirement is a 4. So pretty much even if you're new to the PC genre, as long as you have some level of familiarity with the mouse and keyboard, you can get a circuit to do what you need it to do and get the job done with some practice. The combat ability is a solid 3. I say, I mean the damage ability is a solid 3, my bad folks. Damage ability is a solid 3. Um, It can do damage, but it needs the gear to really give it that sting of burst that it needs. Outside of that, it'll be based around long, long grab CC chain combos until you get the gear that you need to do more burst. The mobility is going to be based around your ability to animation cancel the pre-awakening and dodges along with hops while interchanging that with your cooldowns which is your rushing lava piercer skill. 
Um, support, I'll give it a solid 4 strictly because I am a fanboy of the Berserker's amazing AoEs. It can CC from ridiculous distances sometimes, especially when he's doing his 100% heal. A Berserker that is geared, his presence is known in the battlefield, and with his heals and super armor as, as well as his larger HP pool, his survivability is a solid 4.3. So, Berserkers, keep pushing, guys. It's a solid class, and I'll let the newer players decide that Berserker is a class for you. So Sork is the scythe using class. I'm not going to talk much about pre-awakenings because most of the time you play, once again, will be in awakened form. So the different PVE difficulty for Sork isn't very hard. You can pretty much just do a one to two attack skills and teleport to group to group. So PVE difficulty, I give a solid four. It's not very hard. New player, even new players, new to the class, can do it fairly easily. The PVP difficulty is when the this is when the sword gets more technical and I do believe this is a class that requires you to be learning the technicalities of the class in order to be successful in the PvP genre for this class. So I gave it a tech level of 8 so it has a decent skill ceiling so it takes a while for you to put in time and master it. Please watch guides on various sword experts. Skill required I would say players who are slightly above average so I gave it a 6. Players who have these people who are 6 have a a general understanding of MMOs, this isn't their first MMO, have been playing competitively PvP wise or at least been playing hardcore PvE so they kind of understand how to use the character and their ways around the mouse and keyboard. Alright so combat ability I want to give a solid 3.9 for damage, meaning that the Sork has good damage, has a nice burst potential, it does rely heavily on buffs when it comes to his DPS, his buffs can also buff his teammates which will make his support affinity go up in my opinion. But Sork is very buff centric, so be sure to get your buffs down with your darkness fragment as well as your animation cancels and your damage should be alright. The mobility isn't linear, so the Sork can teleport in four directions, not covering much distance, but he is not the type of class you would think will win any beat anyone in a straight line race. And the survivability of Sork is fairly decent, but it's gonna be highly based on reaction time and positioning. Be sure to utilize those iframes, folks. First we want to talk about is our first scout class, the Ranger. The Ranger is a very easy, new player friendly class, low skill requirement, I gave it a 4. The tech isn't that high so you have to be very tech savvy and technical to be a successful Ranger. The PVE difficulty is very low meaning that your clear speed is high. Low PVE difficulty means high higher clear speed so you can level up a Ranger fairly easily with a lot less effort. You might need to carry a lot of mana pots in the beginning of the game though. So PVP difficulty I'll also give it a 4 meaning that there isn't much difficulty when it comes to successfully being an offensive Ranger. Now defense on the other hand might be more of a struggle for Rangers. So let's move on to the combat ability. So I gave Ranger a high score of 4.5 in the damage category. Me and the Rangers have really high burst damage and this also is the reason why they clear so quickly. They have one of the highest multiplier skills in their awakened form which can do tons of damage. So the PvP 1v1 especially is fairly easy for any Ranger to be good at without being very skillful. The mobility is a 3.5, has a iframed dash and is awakened as well as good running speed as well as aerial flips in the air and is pre-awakened. His iframe dash might I add does cause a lot of decent which can help or hurt you in certain situations. The support category for ranger is I gave it a 2 meaning that I don't see rangers as heavy support class. They really support you by killing your enemies fast but they don't really support the team in my opinion. They do have some AoE in the pre awaken but I don't see them using that very often maybe due to lack of damage. Um, the survivability ranger is probably one of the biggest Achilles heel for the ranger because the ranger has high, such high damage but staying alive as a ranger is where the challenges will really be at the door for you guys. So survivability not so high for me in my opinion for rangers. They have some frontal guards and some iframes but still compared to other classes it's a probability kit isn't that high. Now we're going to move on to the Tamer guys. So Tamer is the Beast Master, Pet Master, Lowly Master, whatever master class of the game. Okay guys, um, Tamer is actually um, a very useful class. It's by her cuteness she gets the job done. In PvE she can pull in extra mobs using her pet as an extra tool of aggro. So PvE difficulty is a 4 meaning that she clears really fast once you get her gear to a certain point. PvP difficulty I give it a solid 8 because you gotta know what you're doing as a tamer to be successful in PvP. It has tech of 8 as well because I believe this class has a high skill ceiling requiring practices and a lot of finesse. The skill requirement is 6.5 but you can be lower if you're not interested in PvP. So I put the skill 
skill requirement for people who are interested in PvP and becoming, you know, very successful at whooping multiple opponents with the Tamer. So it's a solid 6.5, meaning you have to be above average in your general PC gameplay. Out of 5 for the combat abilities, let's go with damage. Damage is 3.9, guys. The Tamer has good damage, also has a grab, surprising that many people do not know this. The Tamer's damage is exponential and has a lot of uh, nickel and dime effects that all comes together to equal a big burst. So keep that in mind, tamers can burst you down, especially when they have their pets out. Tamer, surprisingly, even though the pet isn't the main source of damage, do significantly better when the pet is out. And it's a lot more chaos trying to CC a tamer when you have paint splattering all over the place. Um, mobility for the tamer, I give a solid 3.5. The tamer has a lot of quick dashes and a lot of backflips for uh, sustained movement. Um, the tamer do have a staff jump skill that allows them to launch the character several meters across the me uh, I say field. I was gonna say map <laughs> across the field. Um, it has good super armor and CC. It has a block in the awakened form that's very reliable and has an easy transition from mobility from her block. Her support is only a two though. I do not see the tamer as a high support class. Um, if you do want to argue for the tamer's support case. Please leave some comments to enlighten me so I'll learn more about all the classes. Survivability give a solid 3. Tamer isn't the most tankiest class, but they can be very survivable if they know how to use their character and utilize their pets for confusion. Alright guys, this is the major poster child for the tanks guys, the Valkyrie. Sword and Shield, Lance and Shield. So as Awaken, it's going to be one of the slower grinders, so the PvE difficulty is a 6.6, .6, strictly because it requires a lot of AP before the grinding speed picks up. You won't have a lot of attacks if you first awaken as a Valkyrie, so you will need to have good gear or else the clear speed might be mind numbing for you. The tech is a solid 8, mainly because that the Valk is very easy to use if you just want to be a sitting tank, but if you do want to add some offensive and shake and bake to your movements, then you're going to need to learn the high tech that requires good mobility and timing for your attacks to burst properly. The PvP difficulty is a 5, meaning it's average, meaning that you can be easy turtle Valkyrie or more technical offensive and good mobility Valkyrie. The skill requirement is a 3 though, so pretty much a learning curve in the steep and you can easy way into becoming a better Valk at any time. But you can sit back and be a tank until you learn the mechanics a little bit later. So the damage guys, the damage is a 3. A 3 for sustainability, but it has a high burst potential once you level up your Valk to about, I think I want to say 60 or 61 when all the skills come together and you get your gear to a certain point and then you see the Valk's burst really come out. The mobility of the Valk is 2.8, meaning on average that's not the most mobile class, but with good practice you can get your care, you can get your Valk moving better than most. Support is a 4, meaning that it's very friendly to the support role, it's built for it. You get buffs, you get AoE heals, you get really good crowd control, which I don't know why people say they don't have crowd control. And you have one of the only classes with a pull that can pull your enemies together and you can seriously do some really good team plays if you synchronize with your teammates to do some serious punishes when you pull your opponents together into a circle. So our ability is definitely a 5, the shield is really hard to break through, especially if you're a DP built Falk. Your biggest thing for survivability, the only thing that can really stop you is that how much you can avoid being grabbed. Without grabs, Valks would be pretty much unstoppable. So keep that in mind, this is why I give survivability a solid 5 out of 5. Musa, the male counterpart to the Mewa, the fastest class in the game, both male and female are very fast and a lot of players who are new to the game should find out that once you do that dash skill with Musa and Mewa, unlike the video, you can actually animation cancel that dash for it to be procking twice as fast and be moving even faster. So Musa and Mewa are insanely fast, no one's catching them. The PvE difficulty of the Musa though, we're going to focus on the Musa now, is that the PvE difficulty is fairly low, it's very spin to win, very new player, new to PC gaming friendly, so if you're new, you just want a class will be fun to grind, fun to play, Musa is the class for you. It won't do very well in large group fights unless you do gear it heavily. Its defense is his Achilles heel, but you have to utilize its speed to make up for that lack of defense. So that's where the PvP difficulty comes in. As a tech of 5, meaning that it's optional to be a technical Musa, there is some room to actually show that you are more than just spin to win. But is it required to get the job done as a Musa? Absolutely not. So skill requirement for new Musas are only one, meaning that you don't really need to have any level of proneness inside you to be a Musa and still be a semi-successful Musa. Out of the 5, look for the combat ability, let's go for damage first. So damage is 3.3, Musas have good damage, not the burst use class, is more sustained type of damage and more continuous pressure that gets Musas its kills. It has good AoE though, so it, its attack range is very nice. 
His mobility is obviously the one of the highest in the game, so it's a solid 5 out of the 5, the most mobile class in the game. So it's tank, his survivability is going to be based around him not getting caught, so his survivability is a 2.8, depending how aware you are when you're fighting. Support is not very supportive of his teammates, it's not really synergetic, it's a very good solo gameplay, but team gameplay, unless you're very geared with a lot of DP built in, his team gameplay isn't going to be that great. You're going to be a lone samurai in the woods, slaying your enemies, but this is a shit ton of fun guys, and I do recommend for very new players who are new to everything, to play Musa. Very fun grinder. Mewa, female counterpart to Musa, but the differences are pretty notable. So the PvE difficulty is slightly higher for Mewa, I gave it a 5 because its attack ranges isn't as big as the Mewa's. Though the single target damage is higher on the, on the Mewa, the AoE aspect is severely, severely lacking compared to the Musa counterpart, meaning that PvE clear speed can be a bit slower on the Mewa and take a bit more effort and different skills to be commanded. The PvP difficulty is a slightly easier, has a better single target burst, and it also has a really, really good um, cancel combo that most Mewas will follow. The real difficulty with PvP will become how well you position before you start your attack. The technique is 6.5, meaning there is room for him to be a very technical Mewa, but will it be required after you learn the main master cancel for your burst combo? Probably not. The skill requirement is a 4, meaning you can be below average in skill, but with some time and training and general learning, you'll be a, a very successful Mewa in PvP, and as well as PvE. Um, the damage is a solid 4, but I'm, I'm putting this in reference to the single burst that Mewas get once they're really geared. They can really shut down the target from 0 to 60 really fast and then chase out of dodge before selecting their next target to come back and attack again. The mobility is 5, five out of 5 for obvious reasons, fastest class in the game, matching the male counterpart. Support is 2, not very synergetic. It can help this team by just being literally strong enough to take out important strategic targets before they can do more damage to your enemy, I mean to your allies. So the survivability is a 3.1, meaning that it has higher survivability than the Musa by migrating system, mainly because the Mewa actually has a block compared to the Musa counterpart. So the Mewa can block, guys, a standing a standing block at the awakening. So they can just have an active block going between their dashes and stuff like that, which adds a little bit more survivability to their toolkit. Okay, guys, so is Ninja the class for you? So Ninja is a very skill intensive class it is by any means not the easiest class in the game it's probably one of the hardest classes in the game the pve difficulty is five meaning it has an average clear speed you can push the clear speed of your ninja if you really want to challenge yourself and become a hand keyboard warrior with the animation cancels and consistency pvp difficulty is a solid 7.5 meaning that you are very very challenged in pvp the mistakes are very punishable any animations missed can often lead to prolonged animations and you just standing there posing. So please, please put in the work if you want to be successful in PvP as a ninja. The tech is 8.5, meaning it's a high skill ceiling, that is why you see many ninjas fighting each other and none of them use the same exact combo chain. The skill requirement is a 7.1, meaning that this is, is a class I recommend to players who are seasoned in other video games, especially in the PvP PC genre. Um, if you are a new player, if you come with the right mindset, you still have the grounds to become a successful player as long as you bring that naruto dragon ball z type work ethic okay guys so we're gonna talk about the combat ability the damage i'll give a solid 3.8 any class in this video that gets under four means that they probably in the combo needed range once you hit four and above you can kill classes without any combos needed so 3.8 range meaning that he is a combo based class but he has the potential to be a, a one to three skill nuker if you get his gear high enough so he can graduate from the combo necessity mobility is a 3.1 ninjas have terrible long-term mobility but have very nice burst mobility and good maneuverability within short distances around opponents the support is a solid two ninjas aren't a heavy synergetic class they are not good at team gameplay but they do have some aoe's that can help out and a well-placed ninja can disrupt the flow of battle but they are mainly a solo fun class survivability is a solid 3.9 the main reason ninja has a 3.9 for survivability is based off of how well you build your ninja your ninja is very guild dependent and with proper evasion you'll be probably one of the most annoying nuisances on the battlefield as well as using your stealth properly and timing it proportionally to when you want to burst and get out do not to run out of stealth use stealth 
to escape, do not try to run on foot. Ninjas are not fast when it comes to long-term mobility. So keep that in mind, guys. Is Ninja the challenge for you? Konochi is the ninja female counterpart. Though they're similar pre-awakened, once they awaken, their differences go further apart. The PvE difficulty is a solid 5 for Konochi because they have average clear speed. Though they have more AoEs, the damage potency isn't that high with their AoEs. The PvP difficulty is a 6.5. It is a slightly more high-tech class compared to other classes, but the difficulty isn't that hard once you get the hang of it. It's not as skill-intensive as ninjas, but still requires some level of skill. Tech is a solid 8, so they do have a lot of technicalities that has to be learned for Konochi to be as successful as you want them to be. Skill requirement based solid 6.5 above average players who are used to PvPing or playing PC games for at least a little while. Um, new players who do come to Konochi expect to train and practice a lot if you truly enjoy your class. The damage is solid 3, meaning they are more combo heavy relied, reliant than ninjas. They can, once extremely geared, become more bursty, but it requires a lot of gear and patience. Um, but Konochi is a heavy, heavy combo class, a lot of AoEs. The mobility is a 2.8, they don't have the shadow step that ninjas have, so their mobility is even worse than ninjas, but they do have a lot better AoE and support, so the support category for Konochi is a gave it 3.7 compared to ninjas. Survivability is also 3.8, Konochi's have a nice block and pre-awakening as well, and a lot of super armor and self-recovery skills that gives them HP that's very reliable and easy to land, as well they have stealth, so Konochi's are a very viable class, and I hope you guys enjoy playing them in the future. So Wizard and Witch, I decided to do together because they're so similar, there are very few differences. Two of the major differences I can think of off the top of my head is the fact that the one with being the wizard can grab and as well as the wizard having a higher 100% spender. I do believe the witch has a higher defense buff or something along those lines. Um, the PvE difficulty though for this class is extremely low, meaning they clear very fast, especially depending on the grind rotation. So I give it a solid 1 for PvE difficulty, very new player friendly. PvP difficulty is still relatively low, very new player friendly once again. Um, they don't struggle that much, but they do have a little more challenge in 1v1s where the attention is focused on them due to their lack of mobility, but that's why I give it a 4 and not a 2 or anything lower. The tech is 3, meaning the wizards and witches aren't very technical classes, so it's a low skill ceiling, easy to master, and easy to pick up. The skill requirement is 2, so new players who are new to this type of PvP or PvE gaming and PC gaming in general can easily pick up this class without investing too much time in learning it, learning it to master it anyway. The damage is a solid 5, having one of the highest damages in the game. The real Achilles heel is the mobility, which is a solid 2.5. After he does his teleport, he does have many options of dodging or, of dodging or losing a, a pursuer. The support is 4.5 because they have like the trifecta of CCing your enemies, healing your allies, and buffing your friends. So survivability is the last thing we're going to talk about, which is solid 3 to 5. The reason I gave it a 3 or a 5, meaning that it can be extremely tanky compared to other people who stack DP, being the defense stat in BDO, or they can be average up to average level of tankiness if they do not stack a defensive build. So they can be tanky or average. Generally, the all-star class, according to the meta. So if this class is a class for you, then you are very lucky to enjoy Wizard and Witch. But I do hear many complaints that the PvE is boring. Okay guys, time for our sexy Dark Elf, the Dark Knight. So the PvE difficulty of Dark Knight, I gave a solid 2 because it is a very fast nuker. It's like a Sork with higher mobility but a little bit less damage potency. Um, Dark Knight users are very, very class carried in the sense that the class is very hard to be bad with and allows you to be very, very efficient when it comes to money making in PvE. As well as PvP, Dark Knights are well in demand, they have lots of AoEs, and can handle almost any class. I do not see them struggling in PvP in any situation, as long as they have enough gear. The tech is 4, meaning the class is not a high tech class. This is a very new player friendly class. The skill ceiling I do not consider to be extremely high. With a little bit of time investment and a little bit of studying, then you'll be able to play it on a master level and just have to focus on getting your gear to the right level. So the skill requirement is a 3, meaning this is a very new player friendly class and you can easily kick butt. Do not let the pre-awaken fool you. Once you are awakened, the class is a different type of monster. So let's talk about the combat ability. I give it a 4.2 when you're geared. It has very high burst, a lot of big bang AoEs. Not as much CC as a witch and wizard, but a lot of burst. 
The mobility is a 4, the iframes are very reliable and hard to counter for a lot of classes. So you can easily kite and nuke someone down. The support is 3, has good DPS but not, um, but not really um, high CC. So the support isn't going to be a really top category for your Dark Knight. Survivability is 3.8, usually just being carried by your iframes. You do have a block you can use, especially from swapping from the Awakened to your Pre-Awakened. So survivability is decently high on this class. This class is all around there. Really great DPS, really fast iframes, really new player friendly. Alright boys, this is a new kid on the block, the striker, filling us up with his very gimmicky moves, but he is also becoming a major role in the cast as he has recently received some buffs. I'm going to keep his PvE difficulty at 5, he has decent clear speed, so I'll keep him in the middle for average. PvP difficulty is 7.5, meaning he needs a lot of combos when he's not geared properly. So he is a very skill oriented class, but the more gear you get, the less skill you need. The tech is 8.5, so if you want to be a high tech character with the striker, showing off really cool abilities and animation cancels, this class gives you that type of leeway to do so. The skill required is a little bit above average with a 5.5, I mean 5.6 skill requirement, but anyone can learn. Just do your homework, watch your videos, and study the animations of how people do them. Some grabs are really time dependent, so it's a very interesting, challenging class if you want it to be. The damage is a 3.8, Striker does have really good damage now. Um, compared to his pre-awakening, his awakening is very good damage sustainability, so just get to that awakening boys. The mobility is 3, meaning it's average. I can raise it maybe to a 3 to 3.5. He does have a very good sprinting skill in pre-awakening, but his gap closes in awakening seems kind of slow compared to other classes. Support is 2, meaning it is not a big support type of class he's some type who stays in the fray and just brawls hogging the attention um, survivability is a 4.1 good magic defense awesome super armors which allows him to swing without flinching forward guards allows him to absorb damage without taking any um, damage directly to his health points if blocked in the front so his survivability is a solid 4.1 I don't know what any more buffs to come hopefully no more I think he's very very viable now I only if my ninja got shown half the amount of love that the striker got since he came out, I would be a very happy camper. Hey guys, so if you guys found this video helpful and if you're a new player who found the tips and information from this video very informative and allowed you to choose a class with more clarity, please share this with your friends. That's the best way you can to support me guys. Much love. Um, this is the first video I did on my new computer, so hopefully the quality seems a little bit better to you guys. Let me know in the comments below, okay? See you guys next time. Peace.